I'm going to do a screencast today of uh, circular motion and try to tie in Newton's law of universal gravitation from the last screencast so that you can kind of understand, uh, you know, why do we study the universal law of gravitation in this unit? It's really because you've got things like uh, moons that orbit planets. You've got planets that orbit stars like the sun. You've got artificial satellites like the International Space Station, as I show here on the slide, that orbit the Earth. And for the most part, uh, they're going in a pretty close to a circle. Planet orbits are actually a little bit elliptical, but it's very close to being circular motion. And most of the satellites that we launch that orbit the Earth are moving in circular motion, and they're moving at constant speed. So that's why we kind of tie in the universal law of gravitation to our unit on circular motion. So let's talk a little bit about you know how things stay in orbit. From the last screencast, you should have seen that um, you know Newton did this thought experiment that if you got something moving fast enough, if you shot a cannon off the top of a mountain fast enough, it would just continue to go further and further until you shot it so fast that as it fell, it was being pulled towards the Earth, but it was going so fast that it just continued to go in a circle around the Earth and never actually touched the Earth because it was moving so fast. So you might wonder, you know, how fast does something have to go to orbit the Earth? Well, the first thing you have to think about is, um, you know, why do things orbit in space above the atmosphere? Why don't we put satellites in orbit, you know, closer to the Earth? It would take less energy to, to get them up there. Why do we go all the way up into space? And the big reason is air resistance. Because if you, if you had to fight air resistance and get something going that fast, the heat that would build up would burn up the, the it would take a tremendous amount of fuel, but it would also burn up the, the, or the satellite before it could get going fast enough to orbit. So we go up where there is no atmosphere, up into space, and then you, can, you have no resistance to the, the tangential velocity that you have to get going there. So let's look at a force diagram and, and see what's going on with our International Space Station. I'll do that on the next slide. Okay, so here's Earth right here. Here's the ISS, International Space Station. And if you drew a force diagram of this, we'll make this our system of interest right here. And you thought, what are all the forces that act on the International Space Station as it's orbiting the Earth? You know, at this instant, it's moving in this direction. If you drew a force diagram, there's one force, and it's a gravitational force. Remember, they're up in space. There is We don't even have to worry about ignoring air resistance. There is no air resistance because you're off in space. So the force that causes circular motion is gravity. So the force causing circular motion is gravity. We've seen three other forces cause things to move in a circle. Tension, friction, as you see with cars and uh, when you are on a track and you're running around a circular turn, friction's keeping you going in that circle. And last but not least, the normal force, as we've seen with roller coasters and the road and things like that that are banked. Okay? Well, gravity is the fourth of those common forces that cause circular motion. So how fast does something have to go to move in circular motion? It depends what the altitude is because the gravitational force gets less and less the further you get away from the center of the object that's, that's acting on you. So the higher we go up in space, the further we, we are from the center of the Earth. So let's make some sense out of this. So... We know Newton's second law is F equals MA. The centripetal force, when I'm moving in a circle, I denote with an FC. And I know that that is oops, M V squared over R. So in the case of gravity, the thing that's causing the net force acting on the object, this is the net force when you're moving in a circle, the thing that's causing me to go in a circle is the gravitational force. So I could just set Fg equal to mv, mv squared over r. But now that I know Newton's law of universal gravitation, I have an expression for Fg. I know that Fg is equal to m1 
m2 over r squared times big G, the universal gravitational constant. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute that in on this side over here and set it equal to mass times acceleration, v squared over r being my acceleration for things that go in a circle. Well, there's some common terms here. In the case of m1 and m2, the two masses involved here are the mass of the International Space Station and the mass of the Earth. R is the distance between the centers. So if it's the distance between the centers of the two objects, it has to be the radius of the Earth. And then if the International Space Station is way out here, I've got to add the altitude of the space station to the radius of the Earth. To get from the center of the Earth to the center of the space station, I have to say radius of the Earth plus the altitude of the space station is my distance between the two centers. Well, the space station orbits at about 150 miles. Depends on its mission, but a lot of times it's about 150 miles. The Earth's center is, four, I'm sorry, the Earth's radius is about 4,000 miles. And we'll have to convert these to meters. So I'm going to say the radius of the Earth is 6.38 times 10 to the 6th meters. And then we'll convert miles into meters. I've got in one mile, 1609 meters. Okay. And so this is equal to 241,000 350 meters of altitude, so I have to add this number and this number together. This is the altitude of 150 miles right here. So in the denominator, I've got 6.38. Actually, let me enter that later. I've got some numbers here that I'm going to be able to cancel out before I enter that. So for now, I'm just going to call this radius of the Earth plus altitude squared equals... On this side, the mass times the acceleration over here, the mass is the mass of the International Space Station. V squared is how fast it has to go to maintain that circular motion. And then I've got the radius of the Earth plus the altitude over here. So a couple things can cancel out. I'm going to solve for how fast I have to go. I'm interested in how fast the International Space Station has to move to maintain circular motion at that altitude. So in order to answer that question, let me solve for V. I can cancel out the mass of the International Space Station on both sides. I've got the radius of the Earth plus the altitude in the denominator, but it's squared over here. So if I multiply both sides times this term right here, I'll cancel it out over here, and I'll cancel one of those out over here. So what I, what I end up with is v squared equals g mass of the Earth divided by this term right here, radius of the Earth plus the altitude. That's the center to center distance. Take the square root of both sides, and I've got an expression 350. And now for the speed of the space station to maintain a circular orbit at that height. So I can actually fill all this information in because I know g is 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11th. I know the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And the number I just got on the last page, actually, I'm just going to put it in here. 241. Okay. So in this unit, we've got some really big exponents. And I highly suggest you use a TI-84 calculator when you do these calculations because it's made for big exponents as opposed to your iPad calculator or, you know, something on your phone. It probably doesn't have the ability to do... Um, really big exponents easily. So uh, I'm going to calculate this real quick using a TI-84. 
Okay, there's the calculation, uh, or there's the answer based on the calculation. So um, when you add up the Earth's radius of 6,000 or 6,380,000 meters plus the altitude of the space station in meters, which is about 241,350 meters, that's the 150 miles converted into meters. When I add those together, the center-to-center -center distance between the, the space station and the center of the Earth is about that number right there. So I substitute everything in, and I solve for the velocity of the ISS to go in a circle. This is the speed of the ISS to orbit the Earth in a circle at approximately 150 mile altitude in space. So if you go slower than this, this is really fast, obviously, right? 7,763 meters per second. If you went slower than this, the gravitational force will pull you in and you'll dip down below 150 um, mile orbit. And if you go faster than this, then you'll end up getting further away. It's too fast for gravity to hold you in at 150 miles uh, altitude. And it'll start to leave the, the Earth's uh, you know, orbit at that speed. So that's that's uh, interesting calculation to understand how fast something has to be moving to stay in orbit, and that's a great example with the space station. Second thing I want to talk about here is gravitational field strength. Gravitational field strength is uh, dependent upon how close you are to the Earth's center. So when we are on the surface of the Earth, on the surface of the Earth. Gravitational field strength is equal to 9.81 newtons per kilogram. Well, now let's talk about when you're up in the International Space Station. So on the ISS, what do you think little g is? Little g changes based on, on where you're at relative to the surface of the Earth. Just about anywhere on the surface, even on Mount Everest, it's going to be really close to 9.81. But what if you're on the ISS, which again, 150 miles in space. Now what's the value of G? I'm gonna give you a guess here. How many of you guys think it's zero to 25%? How many people think it's 26 to 50%? How many people think it's 51 to 90%? How many people think it's between 90 and 100%? Well, you've already seen pictures of the astronauts when they're in space on the ISS in movies or when they're on, uh, you know, interviewed on TV or something like that while they're on the space station, they appear to be floating. So you might think, okay, that's going to be something really low, like zero to 25 percent. There's almost no gravity. Well, it turns out, uh, you know from the last video, that the reason they appear to be floating is that they're in free fall. They're in constant free fall. So the International Space Station and everything in it is falling around the Earth constantly. It's just that that's gravi the uh, space station is moving so fast that as it falls and the Earth pulls it in, it's moving around the Earth in a perfect circle. So think about the radius of the Earth. The radius of the Earth is... four thousand miles and now you're only going to add an additional 150 miles to that to get away from the surface that's not that much on a percentage basis it turns out the value of little g is almost it's about 93 to 94 percent even at that altitude and here's how we're going to do a calculation we know that the gravitational force on you or anything is m times little g. And we assume that this little g on the surface of the Earth is constant at 9.81 when we're near the surface. Well, now we've got a new way to calculate the gravitational force. And it's mass of the Earth, mass of the object, divided by r squared, the distance between the Earth and the object. Well, if you're on the surface of the Earth, standing on the surface of the Earth, the distance between you and the center of the Earth is just one Earth radius. 
So the r in the denominator would be just the radius of the Earth. The masses in the, in the numerator, the masses of the two objects, one would be the mass of the Earth, the other would be the mass of the object. Well, let's say you're the object. So we want to figure out, hey, what's, what's the gravitational force of the Earth on you? Well, until now, we've used this equation. So we would have said the mass of u times little g. That should be exactly equal to this equation right here for the universal law of, gra of gravitation. So that should be equal to the mass of the Earth times the mass of u, mass of u divided by the radius of the Earth squared. Well, you'll notice that the mass of u shows up on both sides. Shows up on this side, shows up on this side. So I can cancel it out. And that gives me a really nice equation here to calculate little g at any distance away from the center of the Earth. On the surface, little g, I could calculate it that way. If I'm up in space, 150 miles above the surface of the Earth, I'm going to change the radius in the denominator from the radius of the Earth to the radius of the Earth plus the altitude of the space station because it's got to be the center to center distance between those two things. So I have to add that altitude to the radius. So let's go ahead and do that calculation. We'll put in the 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms in the numerator. And if you remember from before, um, the radius of the Earth plus the altitude, that was 6.38 times 10 to the 6th plus 241,350 meters. And that gave us... So that's the distance between the two. So calculating little g here at that altitude. So g for the ISS is 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11th times the mass of the Earth, 10 to the 24th, all over 6,621,000. 350 and don't forget to square that number one mistake guys make and that answer is 9.81 newtons per kilogram or 9.81 9.10 sorry 9.10 newtons per kilogram so not that much different than 9.81 so if you could somehow build a platform that's 150 miles up into the air, stop the International, uh, International Space Station, you know, that's moving at over 7,000 meters per second, and put it on the platform 150 miles up, then the gravitational field strength would be almost as strong as what's on Earth. That's about 94% of 9.81. So they would feel their almost their normal weight if you could put them on a platform at rest instead of having them in free fall all the time. So not many people know that, so that's kind of interesting. But you can use this equation to calculate g at any altitude. Mass of the Earth, and r squared is the distance between center of the Earth and the object. So, useful equation for calculating the value of the gravitational field strength at different altitudes. So that's how this works into uh, circular motion. I hope you found this screencast interesting uh, and informative because it's kind of cool to figure out how fast uh, some of these satellites have to move. And uh, some of them are so far out there above the surface of the Earth that they're called geosynchronous satellites. They actually sit above a point on the equator, and it takes 24 hours for them to make one full orbit around the Earth, which, of course, in that same amount of time, the point on the Earth is rotating one time on its axis. So they're geosynchronous because they stay above the same point on the Earth at all times. So uh, the altitude determines how fast it has to go. All right, have a great uh, afternoon and evening, and stay safe and stay close to home. Take care.